Hello, good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. Can you believe it? It's been a whole month since we've done this. This is the Saturday when we're coming to you Saturday, the first Saturday of the month. That means it is the monthly gardening checklist time. I can't believe it's already been a month. Now, February is a shorter month, true. Uh, but it was just so crazy. This rolled around and I thought, oh my gosh, it's time for me to start making my list. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I feel like I just did this with you all. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about all the things to do in your garden in March. Uh, this is always a pretty lengthy list. So I always tell you all, get a pen, get a paper, get ready, settle in, grab some coffee. Let's get going. So I am Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens and it is March. So crazy. I can't believe this year is already three months in. It's pretty insane. Uh, there's a lot to do in our gardens right now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that hopefully you already did do if you watched my previous lists. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff to do in this month too. Here in Southern California, we're lucky. We garden year round. Uh, so there's always going to be a pretty lengthy list. I have my list off to the side. So if you see me looking this way, this is just so I don't forget to go over topics with you all. Uh, we are live. So at the end, we'll open up to some questions as well. Uh, so let's get going. So the thing that I'm going to tell you all to do uh, is you'll notice there's a ton of boxes of fertilizer here. So we're going to really get into fertilizing because this is the time plants are waking up. They're like, oh, it's warm and oh, now it's cold. No, it's warm again. <laughs> so we've been a little crazy. We're really windy here today too. So uh, excuse if you hear things falling over. It's been a bit of a hectic windy morning here. Um, but watering, 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 watering. This is the time to make sure that all your plants are on a really good watering schedule. They're getting really nice and established and getting ready for those hot summer months coming up. Uh, if your plant enters into that hot time a little bit stressed, it's going to be that much harder on your plants. So the real secret to success is start fertilizing when the plants start waking up and making sure that you're on a really good consistent watering schedule. You want your deep, your roots really deep and low in the soil. Uh, you want them searching for the water and getting really, really, really low. The longer and more vigorous your roots are, and this is a part you don't see of your plant, the happier your plant is. This is really, really key, especially here in Southern California. When we have those dry Santa Ana winds and then we get into the hot, hot summer, uh, that's really important. So make sure you go in, if you're on a sprinkler system, go look at your sprinklers. Don't allow your gardeners to be the one to adjust it. Go check out that sprinkler box. Probably inside it or to the side of it, there's a little booklet read that booklet learn how your irrigation system works this is super super key because it should be adjusted at least at least three times a year so you want to make sure that right now you're watering deeply 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 so you want to make sure it's running for a good long length of time i have so many people coming in here and the first things that i ask them where do you live what's the exposure how are you watering and so often i hear people go oh well i've got sprinklers i don't know i've got drip irrigation i don't know how it's going that's really, really huge to the success of your plant is making sure you know how it's going. Or very often people are like, oh yeah, it goes like for three minutes every day. That's the worst. That's the worst you could possibly be doing. You want to be going uh, every couple of days, every two days, every three days, and you want it to run for a long period of time. So take that every day for three or four minutes, divide that up by three and change your irrigation. Uh, you can also check out your zones run your irrigation. I tell everybody, you know, go home at nighttime, pour a glass of wine or something, run your irrigation and make sure that everything's working. Like you'll be surprised. You'll look in like a sprinklers right up against the trunk of a tree and only that tree's getting water. Nothing else around is getting water. Uh, make sure that they're turned the right direction. Very often they're spraying the wrong way. Uh, make sure they're not clogged. Uh, that's a really, really common problem is bad irrigation. So you want to make sure that you're going maybe three times a week right now for a good length of time. So also as you're running it, check out how long they're going, then go back about a half an hour later, check the ground, dig down a little bit, see how deep that water has penetrated. You'll be surprised it'll be wet on top, but probably not very low. So that's really, really important. So set those timers, go learn your timer, figure it out, take charge of that timer, be responsible for it, know how it's running, Make sure it's running properly. Make sure everything's working properly. Get on a good consistent schedule right now so your roots are super happy when we enter into the summertime. That's huge. 
Uh, the next thing is I want to talk about annuals. So we are at that really funny in between time here in Southern California. So we have all our cool season stuff still going, our pansies, our kale, uh, the ornamental kales, the violas, all those really beautiful springy kind of things. But we are on a little bit of a warming trend. So you look at those beds and maybe you find an area that kind of needs something done and you have to think to yourself, what am I going to do? Am I going to put a cool season thing in there that's just going to match what I have, hopefully, uh, and then make that look really pretty and let it get nice and established and then change everything over into our more summertime plants? Or do you want to start putting in some of your summer stuff? There's some summer stuff that's coming up, but not a whole lot. Some of the really hot summer things like the zinnias and the bedding dahlias. Um, I'm going to look at my list. Uh, Gumfrina, Lysanthus. Uh, that's still a little too early for that stuff. But like Lobelia, Lobelia is that great. It's so good for that kind of in-between cool, warm, because it likes the warmth, but it also can get established when it's nice and cool. Uh, petunias you're going to start seeing on the market too. Uh, verbena, marigolds are just starting to come in. Uh, so those are the warmer stuff. So you kind of kind of gauge, what do you want to do? Do you want to start establishing the warm stuff or do you want to just kind of fill in and continue out uh, your cooler annuals? Um, for annuals, fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. Their life is so short. They're all about the flower. They're all about making those flowers. The plant thinks it's going to make flowers and set seeds. You're not going to let it do that because you're going to deadhead, right? You're going to take off all the spent flowers because the more you take those spent flowers off, the more flowers it's going to pump out. So I talk about deadheading all the time. That's huge. So fertilize, fertilize, water, water, deadhead, deadhead, all of your annual stuff. That'll make it last a whole heck of a lot longer. And the whole point of it is to be really beautiful, temporary, and full of flowers. So that's how you're going to accomplish that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is geranium. So I have a really nice little clumping of geraniums here. Um, I feel like I want to do a whole video just on geraniums because there's so many different types of geraniums. And what we're calling geraniums are actually not geraniums. Isn't that crazy? So the common name is geraniums, but the botanical name is pelargonium. But there is something botanically called geranium. How did that get switched up? I have no idea. So I feel like I should do a whole video just on that. But I'm going to be talking about geraniums, commonly called geraniums, truly pelargoniums. So these are the different types of geraniums. And there's a lot more, so I just brought kind of a few. Uh, but we have our zonals. We have our Martha Washingtons. We have our scented. There's also the ivy geraniums. I didn't have any nice, really full ivy geraniums. Those are the ones that are great in boxes spilling over. You know, you go over into Germany and England, you see all the red ones spilling out of everybody's little window boxes. Those are the ivy geraniums. This is a time when they're really kind of coming into their own. You want to make sure, again, deadhead, deadhead. Um, but you also want to start fertilizing. But you don't want to fertilize very much your scented geranium. So this is a chocolate geranium. I'll kind of bring it into screen. Isn't that gorgeous? This is all about the foliage. So you can lightly fertilize these. These don't need a lot of fertilizing right now. And there's also smaller leaf ones. Um, there's rose scented geraniums. There's um, nutmeg scented geraniums. There's lemon scented geraniums. So those are like the smaller leaf ones. There's peppermint. This is chocolate. The peppermint has none of that dark center in it. Um, so stay, you know, prune them up just a little bit. They don't like to be heavy, heavy prune, just kind of shaped up. So you can shape them up a little bit, but kind of leave those alone. A little bit of fertilizing. Okay. But don't go crazy. These guys really want it right now. So, and these guys don't like to be heavily pruned. So don't prune them like crazy because it's going to take a really long time for those to come back. Um, you're going to start maybe seeing a little bit of rust problems on that. That's pretty common, especially with those Martha Washingtons. Uh, they can get that. They're so full and dense. So part of it is because the air circulation is not super great, but that color, oh my gosh, this color is so pretty. Um, if you're starting to see a little bit of rust problems, you want to pull out. And this is the one that I always show you guys that I love the three in one spray. <laughs> so this one says Rose three in one spray. Um, there are some other three in one sprays. Uh, the trick with these, if you look at them, uh, it's all the same stuff. <laughs> it all has the same ingredients in it. So does it say veggie three in one? Does it just say three in one? Does it say rose three in one? It's all the same thing. Uh, so just come up and check with us. Uh, but what it is, is this has copper in it, or sorry, no, it has sulfur in it and it has the insecticidal soap in it. And we're having some sound difficulties. I hear myself. Are we good? We're good. Check in. We're good? Yeah. We're okay, good. cool. Um, so, uh, this is great because the sulfur spray in this will help really well with the rust problems you may have. And rust is if you flip that leaf over, 
and you see little like orange dots that literally kind of look like rust on metal. Uh, but they're always usually pretty perfectly round. You can almost rub them off. Uh, so that's rust. Uh, we also get that a little bit on roses. So uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, this is good to spray for that. So make sure. And usually they kind of outgrow it a little bit. The Martha Washingtons tend to kind of outgrow that. But just look for it. I look at mine. These ones look fantastic. There's not even a sign of anything on it. So if you see that spray with this uh, this also has the insecticidal soap in it so this will work really well with aphids uh, with all those little tiny soft body things aphids white fly mealybugs uh, so this is so great i always have this in stock always 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 because it works on so many different things i absolutely adore this um so that's the dealio with geraniums um, the next thing I want to talk about sweet peas. So hopefully you got your sweet peas in the ground. It's pretty late to get them established. Uh, they're probably really starting to flower and really come into flower. So keep those things deadheaded like crazy. Bring them in. I just harvested a huge bouquet of white sweet peas, uh, brought them in, stuck them in this really pretty vase that I have and put it next to the chair that my husband sits in typically. And he keeps saying <laughs> every night, something smells so good and I keep saying it's the sweet peas and he's like oh yeah that's right uh so they smell fantastic they're super super pretty they're very long lasting in vases uh it's really great so they're coming in keep those things deadheaded too the more you cut those sweet peas off the more sweet peas you're going to have the more flowers you're going to have so make sure that you're keeping those well trimmed bringing them inside give them to neighbors put them in vases all over your house uh, have all that beautifulness inside, which is really amazing. Uh, so keep those things well fertilized too. So fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. The one that I like to use on that is the rose and flower one. So this one's super great, rose and flower. This is fantastic for those. Uh, so just side dress it with that water them in. keep them moist, not soggy or anything, but they do like a, a good amount of water. They like that full sun, uh, keep them cut. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is grapes and canberries. So I actually brought one over for you to see. Uh, this is a blackberry. Um, if your grapes are starting to put out some growth, if it's about two inches worth of growth, growth on your grapes, start fertilizing. It's time. Uh, hopefully you got those things cut back. Hopefully you copper sprayed them. If you don't, there is next year. Uh, so make sure that you're keeping those sprayed in the beginning uh hopefully you cut them back if you have not cut them back be very careful about cutting them now if you start cutting them when they start to make some new growth you will cut a branch and then you'll see it's almost like crying it's like weeping out water it's because all of that water is moving through the grape now to produce that new foliage and if you cut it it's going to drip like crazy do not cut it when it's hot so if you're like yikes i did not cut mine back and it's too big and it's crazy maybe cut a branch or two when it's going to be cool and then wait don't go hacking at the whole thing uh it's definitely going to stress it out do not cut it in the summertime don't cut it in the summertime that's really going to stress it out um back when i was knee high to a grasshopper and didn't know and i have a grape that i've had forever it's a family heirloom grape i made the mistake of cutting it in the summertime not knowing uh and i almost killed it so <laughs> learn from my mistakes that i learned in my early early 20s uh make sure that you're cutting that only when it's cool but if you did all the things right and you're starting to see some new growth, you can go ahead and start fertilizing. I fertilize with the all purpose, this guy, um, with that. Um, and then I sometimes will give the rose and flower. I kind of intermix a lot of these sometimes, but this is the main one. So if that's all you're worrying about, get this all purpose, uh, start getting that guy fertilized. Uh, watch for aphids on the new buds and stuff. If you have aphids, hopefully you have the rose three in one or the three in one or the vegetable three in one because they're all the same thing. Um, and you can spray those for them. Um, the cane uh, berries, I'm kind of losing myself here again. Uh, the cane berries, this is what your cane berries should look like right now. Ooh, this rose has got me. Let go. Uh -oh. Okay, <laughs> the cane berries, the cane berries, this is a good example. This has some old growth on it and some new growth on it. So you can see this old growth does not look great. So this wasn't, well, the, no one pulled the old growth off on these. So you've got this ugly old growth and you have this beautiful new growth. So if you haven't pulled off your old growth, go through and pull it all off you can see the difference between that lush new stuff and then the kind of yucky brownish looking stuff so pull that all off that just helps you kind of understand what's going on with your grape also or sorry your berries uh looks a lot better that's your bear your cane berries are going to be your blackberries your raspberries all that kind of stuff um so make sure that you're looking at that if your new growth is a couple of inches like this is time to start fertilizing so they love that fertilizer too the all-purpose works great
So uh, go ahead and start pruning, or sorry, pulling off all the old stuff. If you haven't already, start fertilizing. It's a great time for that right now. Um, the next thing that we're gonna talk about, I feel like I keep losing myself here, uh, strawberries. So I'm a strawberry fanatic. If you go to our YouTube page, I've got a lot of strawberry videos there uh, that you can watch. I love, love, love strawberries. Uh, get your strawberries in the ground now. Your traditional kind of strawberries that everybody thinks about as the traditional ones, the ones that make runners, the seascapes, the sequoias, the chandlers, all those things, start getting those in the ground now because they're really gonna start taking off very soon. Um, the other thing that's a really good time because we're getting almost a little bit late for our strawberries um, is the alpine strawberries. Alpine strawberries, you can still plant now. If you've watched any of my videos where I've ever talked about anything edible, I've probably talked about alpine strawberries. I'm absolutely obsessed with these. Uh, they're so pretty. These are like wild strawberries. Uh, they're little, they're clumpy, they're cute. They make fantastic borders. Um, and they have a little tiny flower that's beautiful. It's so springy and amazing. Um, and they make tiny, tiny little uh, berries that are just like the most amazing flavor ever. They almost kind of have a grapey vibe to them. And there's white ones and there is uh, red ones. And sometimes the white ones are listed as yellow. And in fact, it probably, this says yellow wonder, but really it's white, it's not really yellow. Um, and they're just super fantastic. So good time to get those in the ground when you're doing your strawberries. Um, I alternate between the rose and flower and acid mix. They like a little bit of acidity. So I kind of back and forth um, on that. Um, as we go into acid, let's talk about uh, all of your blueberries. So blueberries like that acid fertilizer, this is time to start fertilizing them. Um, I find personally that blueberries are always so much easier in containers because they need that acidity. So I find that keeping them in a container helps that acidity uh, stay consistent in the pot. Whereas when you're putting this in the ground and they can grow in the ground totally fine, but you just gotta be a little bit more careful with them um, because when you're fertilizing, that fertilizer is kind of spreading. So I have a better uh, success rate with those in containers. Uh, two blueberries is best, but not totally necessary. If you only have room for one bl blueberry, get yourself a bountiful blue. Um, if you have room for two of them, awesome, because each plant will make probably about 20% more because there's two uh, different blueberries side by side. Uh, so we have some really great selection of blueberries. Bountiful Blue is my favorite though, but I do have multiple blueberries. Um, the next thing is um, all of your shrubbery. So if you do any hedging, if you have like a boxwood hedge, you have a privet hedge, like a legustrum hedge, anything like that, go ahead and start hedging now. Uh, you don't want to really hedge in the winter time or when it's too cold because it takes a long time for that new growth to flush out and you give it that fresh cut and it's kind of like a haircut that's just a little bit too short and you're sort of waiting for it to grow back out. Same thing with our hedges, but hedge now, it's a great time for that. Um, all of your perennial stuff that kind of needs a little bit of cutting back, it's a good time to do that little bit of shaping because new stuff's gonna start popping out right away. Uh, so it's a great time for all of that stuff. Um, the uh, azaleas. So azaleas are flowering right now. When azaleas flower, which is kind of crazy, they're actually dormant when they're flowering. Um, so they are all going right now. So this is a really good time to plant your azaleas. They're all flowering right now. Um, but do not allow water or rain to get on these flowers. It turns them to absolute mush. So you wanna make sure you're never overhead watering these. If we know rain is coming, cover them up with a bag or even like put an umbrella in the ground to keep them covered up so you don't lose those beautiful flowers because they just will totally mush out if they get wet onto the flowers. So be careful with that. Um, and then right now with your azaleas, it's um, an okay time to start fertilizing them as they're slowing down. So if yours are already done, uh, or have already set all of your stuff, a little bit of your acid fertilizer is a great time um, for them right now, but no water on those flowers, right? Um, the next thing's camellias. I didn't bring an example of the camellias, but if you have camellias, you know that some of them are winding down and some of them are just really starting. Uh, so make sure that you're keeping all those flowers off the ground and that you're not allowing any of those flowers to sit on the ground because that's how we get issues with camellia bud blight, um, where the camellia flowers kind of turn brown and don't fully open up very nicely. Uh, so that's how you know you have a blight problem. That can also happen from too much water on the foliage. Usually camellias are much higher, so uh, hopefully they're not getting too much water on the foliage. We don't get a lot of rain here. So chances are if all of your 
buds look pretty bad, it's bud blight. So make sure you keep all of those picked off. You don't allow any of them to go on the ground. Mulch underneath your camellias to add a protective layer that will help. It is good for them anyways, they're very shallow rooted. Uh, and do not prune them until they're totally done flowering. Once those are totally done flowering, you can go ahead and absolutely uh, prune them and fertilize acid fertilizers. So uh, they love the acidity. So it's a good time to start fertilizing uh, all of your camellias. You're starting that now. Um, so the next thing, hydrangeas, same thing. They're starting to kind of wake up. Do not prune your hydrangeas now. No, 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 because then you're not going to get any flowers because they're starting to wake up and you maybe even see a flower, a little bud here and there. Uh, the acid bluing formula is great if you're trying to keep your hydrangeas blue. You have to continually do that. So if you bought one that's already blue uh, and you're like, oh, I have a blue hydrangea. No, you don't because it's going to turn pink if you don't keep adding that blue into it. So you got to get that acid bluing formula. And you know, I think I actually forgot to grab one of those. It comes in a container like this and it says bluing formula on it. We have it here. Uh, so you can go ahead and start adding that in there. Uh, and I think they're fun to experiment. You can get a little kind of like mad scientist with it uh, and let it be pink one year, let it be blue one year, do half and half. If you just kind of fertilize one side, you really will find you have multiple colors on one plant, which is pretty cool. Uh, so don't prune anything right now. Let those kind of get all nice and woken up. Uh, fertilize, acid fertilizer, bluing formula, uh, formula, acid fertilizer if you're just keeping them uh, regular, bluing formula if you're trying to keep them blue. Um, and then uh, roses. So I pulled a rose, it already has flowers on it. I have one rose at home that has flowers on it. So hopefully you did your due diligence and you pruned them back in uh, January uh, and stripped off all the leaves and gave them a nice, really beautiful prune. Um, this is time to start fertilizing. So I did my first round of fertilizer um, on it and I love this rose and flower. I absolutely adore the Malibu compost tea. This is one of my favorite things. Um, the fertilizer is fantastic. This is like the food. This is like the vitamin. This gives it that extra shot, almost like a probiotic because it adds all the good uh, bacteria and encourages all the good mycorrhizae, fungal, uh, fungus stuff growing in the ground. And it just makes them super happy and makes them pull up that fertilizer so much more. So if you've not tried this, and let me tell you, they got me because they gave me a free bag when I first started working here. And I thought, okay, and now I'm addicted. So <laughs> now I have to buy it. So it really does such a huge difference on the roses. Uh, so these two together, it's time to start doing that. If you have not pruned back your roses, what are you waiting for? It's almost too late. So give them a nice light prune. Don't go as crazy as you would uh, in January. Defoliate the old growth. You'll have old growth and new growth. Don't let the old growth stay on. Um, and then uh, hopefully you're starting to get flowers. This one's so pretty. This is Rosie the Riveter and already has like a huge amount of beautiful flowers on it. Um, my um, Frida has some flowers on it already, which is pretty amazing. So uh, they're starting to go. Um, the next thing is deciduous fruit trees. For your deciduous fruit trees, you're gonna see a lot of new growth coming out. You probably have some flowers uh, getting started here and there. Uh, so if you've got some new growth coming out and it's still kind of pink budded looking on the fruit tree, you can go ahead and still copper spray for that. The copper spray uh, keeps any of the overwintering fungal problems from affecting the new leaves, especially for your peaches. If you have that peach curly kind of icky looking leaf, that's totally grosses me out. <laughs> I'm good with bugs and all kinds of things. But when we start getting those weird curly kind of weird leaves, it's a little, it just seems so icky. Um, but that copper spray is good to put all over that. Uh, that will keep any of that from coming on. This is the last month for the copper spray. Uh, if you're all fully nice and leafed out, then you don't want to do that anymore. So you can do it a little bit, but you got to be careful because it can burn. Uh, also, the copper spray is blue, so it can kind of stain the leaves a little bit. Uh, so just be careful with that. But hopefully uh, you've been copper spraying and you give it a little bit of your last round of copper spray now and then stop. Okay, no more. Um, and then the next thing I'm looking at my list so I don't forget anything is, and it's being blocked a little bit, uh, citrus. Citrus and avocados. Uh, it's a great time to plant avocados. If you haven't uh, planted an avocado and you've been wanting to, we have a really great selection of avocados right now. Uh, it's just such a California staple 
here. Uh, they get big, so be prepared for how big they get. Um, but avocados are really kind of a funny plant. They're a subtropical plant, so this is a great month for putting them in the ground. Uh, they don't go deciduous, and what you'll find is you'll have old leaves and new leaves right now on your avocado. So if you've already got one at home and you notice all this fresh, new, beautiful leaves, and then all these old, ugly leaves because with kind of brown tips, that's super common. Uh, they get that from um, all the salinity and stuff in our soil, uh, so that's okay. Uh, but once those leaves start falling off, let it mulch underneath. You can totally mulch with your leaves as long as you don't have persea mite. If you have avocado mite and that's like the little brown dots all over the back of the leaves, don't mulch with those leaves because you're just going to reintroduce that into your new stuff. Uh, so clean that all away and just put a little nice layer of mulch for now. And then next year, hopefully you won't have that problem and you can just mulch with your leaves. Nice and expensive, cheap, helps feed the avocado super awesome. It's kind of like a self-contained, really awesome plant. Um, they love the citrus fertilizer. So you should be starting to fertilize your citrus right now and your avocados right now. Both of these love uh, the citrus fertilizer. So it's a really great time. You can do some light pruning on your avocados right now um, and then make sure you're keeping them well irrigated. They like slow and low, deep, deep water. Just kind of like everything else. Everything really likes that. Avocados especially. That slow, deep watering will help flush out the salts that we have. So if you do have a lot of tip burn, uh, start slow, deep watering. Uh, mulch, mulch, mulch. Watch for the mites. Fertilize. Um, you don't necessarily have to have two avocados to, uh, to get fruit on your tree. Uh, that's kind of a common misconception. It is definitely better if you've got two nearby. Uh, I have a really great avocado video, so if you have questions about avocados, go onto that YouTube page and check it out. All kinds of amazing avocado information there, uh, so you can kind of figure out what you need and, and how uh, to fertilize and what type of avocados uh, we grow really well here in Southern California. The last kind of big thing I'm going to talk about is veggies. So right now we have tomato mania going on. We have hundreds of different types of tomatoes. Again, we're at that funny middle point. So I still have all my kale and my broccoli and all my cool season stuff in my veggie garden right now, uh, but we're starting to transition to the warm stuff. So if you have all your old stuff, buy all the things that you want for summer, your tomatoes um, that are starting to come out, your peppers that are starting to come out. So these bad boys here, this is the tomato of the month. We have them back in everybody. If you missed them, <laughs> the bronze storage is back. Uh, we sold out of that very, very quickly in the beginning. Um, but uh, I'm just saving these. I even up pot them into larger containers and I just put them off to the side in a nice full sunny spot and I'm waiting to harvest out all of my lettuces and things like that. So I save them. Um, and then at the end of the month, I'll start planting them because I'll harvest everything out of my garden. And then I'll start putting in my warm season stuff, my, my um, zucchinis and my eggplants and all those kind of things. But right now too, you can still plant some kale and things like that. So if you kind of want to fill in, if you are putting your tomatoes in and they're just kind of small and not doing anything, maybe uh, plant around some little kales. We have some beautiful six packs of kales. Um, herbs are great to get established right now. Look how pretty this kale is. Just in general, kale so pretty. I love it so much. Um, and then uh, cilantro. We have some beautiful six packs of cilantro. Uh, they like this cooler weather, so it's great to get them in the ground now. Um, fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. Whenever I'm planting anything new, buy alive. This stuff is awesome uh, for anything that I'm planting new because this has a lot of great mycorrhizae in it. That's that good fungal stuff that we want growing in the ground that attaches to the roots of the plants and helps them take in more water, helps them get established quicker, just makes them super vigorous. So anything you're planting, new avocados even, put some of this in the ground to start. You're putting this in the hole as you're planting it because you want to make contact with the roots. But this stuff is fantastic, seriously. Um, good time for bulbs. So hopefully you bought your bulbs early. I always tell everybody, as soon as you see bulbs come in, grab them because we sell out of them so quickly. Everywhere sells out of them. The good colors always go the first. Um, but this is like things like dahlias, um, caladiums, um, all that good stuff, your um, begonias. This is the last bit to grab them and you want to start planting them in the ground now. You're going to add a little bit of that rose and flower mixture into that hole. Uh, so make sure you're getting these things. If you have them, don't forget. I've done that before where I bought a ton and I threw them in my shed and I forgot. And then I found them in the summertime. I went, oh man, they're just totally not viable anymore. They got way, way too hot. Um, and then azalea, or sorry, gardenias uh, start uh, waking up kind of now too. 
Uh, you'll probably have maybe a little bit of yellowing on the leaves from last year. Uh, this is a really good time to start putting in that chelated iron. Um, you don't want to put this in when it's too cold because it just doesn't take it up. But if your gardenia has a little bit of yellowing going on, throw some of this on, but they're starting to wake up a little bit of acid fertilizer too. It's great on those right now um, as well. So this is a fantastic time. You're really going to start fertilizing. You are going to feel like a chemist with all of this stuff. Uh, weed, weed, weed. Watch for snails and slugs. They are really, really getting very active right now. Uh, hand picking them, putting little beer bait traps where you dig a little bowl into the ground throw some beer in there they climb in there they have a party you pick them out the next day and say i don't know if you go home but you can't stay here right mm -hmm. so um make sure that you start checking for all of that stuff slugs and snails too because they're going to start becoming really active but this is the best time in the garden march is the best month of the year i'm absolutely sure of it also, it's my birthday in March. So, <laughs> um, but this is such a good time, such beautiful stuff going on. Uh, we do have all of the, and let's pan over here real quick because these are way too heavy for me to lift up. Uh, we do have all of the uh, Ito peonies coming in. Uh, we have them in all different growth states. If you planted one last year, chances are yours still kind of looks like this. So it still has the little itty bitty baby buds on it. That's totally fine. Don't panic if yours doesn't look like this. Mine looks like this. I barely have any growth growing on mine yet. Uh, these ones were grown in a cooler climate. So when they came here, they woke up really fast. But yours probably looks like this. Uh, and then the new stuff comes out. And then the great big beautiful stuff comes and there's buds on this one already, which is super excited. So if you haven't bought an Anito peony yet, these are the only kind of peonies that we can grow well here in California uh, because of the weather. Uh, pick yourself up an Anito peony. They're beautiful, big, gorgeous flowers. It's so amazing to be able to grow peonies here in Southern California. For the longest time, we just didn't have anything. So these are a little newer on the market. Uh, they're Japanese style peonies. So come in and pick those up ready to go which is super exciting and wow I feel like I'm talking like an auctioneer mm -hmm. is there any questions do we have any questions and if you came into this too late you can always go back and watch and then if you find a question from something I talked about earlier please leave it below uh, we will answer just a handful of questions now but if we didn't get to it don't worry I promise we will answer them in the comments so do we have any pressing questions right now so how often do I add the bluing to my hydrangeas and for how long okay so you start now um, it's always easier in a pot just like the blueberries to keep them really well acidified um, on the back it has a full um, oh I didn't grab that's right I forgot to grab the bottle on the back it has a full uh, instructions on there so make sure that you're following that but I will tell you if your hydrangeas are in the pot uh, you will have better success with bluing. If they're in the ground, it's a little bit harder to get that really evenly established in there. So you might get like a really blue side and a little bit of a pink or a purple side, which is totally cool. I love the way that looks. Uh, so make sure you're really reading those instructions on the back there and following them to a T. Do not eyeball it. I have so many people who are like, oh yeah, I'm fertilizing with the citrus fertilizer and I just, you know, throw a handful down and I'm like, whoa, no, that's not what the instructions say on the back. Your hand is only about a fourth a cup and it's asking for a whole cup per inch of trunk. So it's definitely not enough. So make sure you're reading that back and really following those instructions correctly. Okay, also how often should I have sprayed my earlier roses with copper spray and how often to feed my citrus? Okay, yeah, so um, the citrus fertilizer, like I was just touching on, um, the one we have here says three times a year. This is the first month that you're doing it. Um, I actually do add more than what it says there, uh, more times. It only says three times a year. I actually do fertilizing in between um, and then I make sure uh, especially in a container that I'm really paying attention to that. And then I have something I'm gonna grab here because I forgot to touch on this, but I absolutely love this. If you have any yellowing problems on your citrus, and typically I find it's the ones in containers because uh, they only get what you're giving it. And if it gets flushed out the bottom, it's obviously no longer available to the plant. Um, this is the grower's blend. This is a micronutrient. So this is not a fertilizer replacement. Uh, this is something to use in addition. I had some kumquats that I was completely assured that they were goners. I looked at them and I'm like, I just can't get these guys to green back up. I was having so much problem with them. I threw some of this on there and they're fantastic. So 
If you have any problems with yellowing, this stuff is fantastic. With that fertilizer on the back, it does say three times a year. Do a little bit more in between that. Uh, and then you can kind of eyeball it. It's okay, I won't yell at you for that. But when you do your three main feedings, which the first one starts now, follow those directions totally to a T. As for copper spraying, it's not three times is okay for copper spraying. Um, I'm gonna move back over here because it seems like my mic is better. Uh, about three times a year is okay for copper spraying. I actually think I only did it twice this year. Um, so, but that really, really helps with the fungal problems. I'm super coastal. So mildew issues are usually pretty big for me. Um, and I don't have those issues really anymore because uh, I think partially it's just the way I'm feeding them. I truly, truly find that this stuff helped with so many of my uh, problems. I never have rust anymore. Uh, I very rarely have any mildew problems. Um, this stuff really just makes your plants so happy. Plants are like people. The better you're eating, the better you're taking care of yourself, the less junk that you eat, the better you are and the less sick you get, right? So plants are 100% just like people and they behave totally the same way. Uh, so if you miss your copper spraying, don't fret. Feed them very, very well and then make sure you have this because this has the sulfur in it and you can spray the leaves with this totally year round. You can spray with copper spray on the leaves. I just don't like doing it because it's blue, because it leaves dye, the, not dye, it's not dye, it's actually the copper, but it leaves blue marks on everything. It's bad if you get it on your sidewalk. It's horrible if you get it on your house. I've had to repaint part of my house because I got it all over my house and didn't pay attention and had to touch up the paint right there. Um, so uh, it's okay to still spray if you've got some leaves on there, but I switched to this because I just find it's much cleaner and much easier. Um, so if you missed it, don't fret, it's okay. Um, but make sure next year that you're really getting that done. Cool, yeah, all right. So any other questions you have in there, just leave them down below, we will answer those. This is always such an incredibly long talk. Um, so thank you so much for hanging in there. Hopefully I answered your questions for you just while I was talking. Go back and watch the beginning to see if you've missed anything. Um, and then make sure that you're checking out our YouTube page. If you're like, wait, I have more avocado questions go watch that avocado video. It's really awesome. Thing, same thing with strawberries. Seriously, if you've got a question, we've got a video for it. I guarantee it. So uh, make sure you go subscribe. You can check out all the new stuff that's happening there. Check out our email list. We get so many people calling and going, when are you gonna get in your Disney roses? When are you gonna start your hummingbird summer, summer program? Go sign up for our email list because you'll know. We will send you all that information. So if you haven't done that yet, what are you waiting for? Go sign up for it. It's really, really awesome. All kinds of great stuff here always happening at Rogers Garden. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Be well and be safe and happy gardening. Bye.